Good morning. Uh, uh, today is very sorry for not having a slideshow. I'm sorry for not having a slideshow today. Uh, we just got back to China and uh, you know with the whole uh, with the jet lag and we have a work very busy and then we have a chance to fully prepare. Uh, usually people uh, if they if cannot meet certain things, they usually find an excuse and uh, I'm I'm not an exception to that. Uh, when I prepared the sermon yesterday, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't thinking of letting this translate for me. Uh, when I'm thinking of a guy who's taller, better looking, younger than me, I don't feel very good. <laughs> Well, when I say these things, I'm just trying to like give you an example of how people in the world, how they use excuses and whatever sayings in the world to give myself a reason not to do certain things. So today's lesson I want to share with everyone is about uh, intelligence and wisdom. Uh, many people you can think that like wisdom and intelligence are a very similar, if not the same thing. And typically, when we think of someone who's smart, per se, we think of someone who has a very uh, good ability to reach certain uh, goals, such as you know, doing well in tests, uh, natural ability to uh, do sports, or uh, make uh, ways to make money. And sometimes it's smart, uh, it could be God-given, natural ability, or sometimes it could be uh, come through a vigorous training and a perseverance in order to obtain it. And wisdom differs from intelligence by wisdom is, is more things that you learn and you, things that you accumulate in your life and through experiences you learn to distinguish different priorities and different uh, what's making good judgments. Yeah, for example, when you when you accumulate different uh, knowledge, you start you to prioritize barrier to understand which is more important, which is less important in your life. So we can just simply say that smart is just a kind of ability. 你具备这种能力, 别人做不到的事情, 你可以去做到, so in another way of saying it, the people who are smart is able to achieve certain things that other people cannot, and this is a natural ability. And the difference is that wisdom and not having also having the ability, also knowing where you need to go and be or be at one day. Uh, to use an example of this, it's like intelligence, you could say it's like a, per, a very skilled driver. This person can maneuver through all kinds of traffic situations. 
，这是一种知识，它可以让你知道你要开车要去什么地方，你要达到的目的地是什么。And you can say wisdom is kind of like the GPS of car. It it helps guide you to your destination. Okay. 所以对于我们基督徒来说，我们的智慧是什么呢？就是圣经的真理。And for us Christians, what is intelligence then? And what is wisdom? Sorry, wisdom is the Bible. The Bible guides us to where we need to be one day. So for us Christians, the Bible teaches us what we can do and what we cannot do, and ultimately shows us one day how to get to heaven. Ah, 下面我读一下。刚才呃 ，Michael 读的这一段圣经，《约翰一书》的五章第二十节。呃、uh, ，I'd like to just read the the scripture that、uh, Michael just read for us。我们也知道，神的儿子已经来到，且将智慧赐给我们，使我们认识那位真实的。我们也在那位真实的里面，就是他的儿子耶稣基督里面。这是真神，也是永生。So in First John chapter five verse twenty, it reads, "And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding, so that we may know Him who is true. We and we are in Him who is true in His Son Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life." Ah, this sentence is saying, "God's Son, that is Jesus Christ, has come and has given us understanding. Where is His wisdom? Where is His understanding? Where is His wisdom? Where is His understanding?" So what it's saying is that God has given His Son Jesus Christ, and He can give us wisdom through Jesus, which is the Bible. And this verse is saying that if we are in the church, the church of Christ. We through the Bible, we can ultimately one day achieve eternal life. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter seven, verse twenty-four, it says, "So, if anyone hears my words and does them, he is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The house fell on the rock, and the floods came and washed it away. And the rain 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 came and washed it away. 所以这句话就是说，真正有智慧的人，就是按照上经、上帝所指示的，按照圣经中所说的去行，你就是有智慧的人。So it's saying that the people who are really wise are the people who uses God's words and He puts them into action. 当然了，现在我们世上的人、世界上的人，在基督教会以外的人，我们普遍的重视的是培养各方面的聪明的才智，但是呢，我们却没有这个福气，领受真正的上帝的智慧。And the problem aside from the Church of Christ members is that people of the world typically、uh, try to cultivate certain aspects of their lives, such as intelligence and making money or everything else, but lacking the wisdom of God. 比如说，我们小孩子非常小就开始报各种各样的课程，各种各样的训练班，是为了他们以后在学校以后学得更好的成绩。Uh, for example, nowadays when you, when children go to school, for example, they go to you know whatever class they go, they uh, the parents send the tutoring or certain class of piano classes or certain sports. It's all it's trying try to make them more prepared for life in the future. 那么世界上的人也各种呃各种各样的人可以互相的影响，也彼此的学习。比如说呃他的生意做得很好，那他是怎么做的，我也会跟他学。这个人赚钱还能赚了很多，有什么门道？那么我也会跟他学。所以，人互相之间也在不停的学习，使自己变得更加的聪明。And and and the people in the world, what they typically do is that they try to learn from each other these so-called intelligent and smarts. For example, if this person is very good at earning money, I try to learn from how to earn that money. Or if the person does something very well, maybe fixing cars, I try to learn from that person how to fix cars. 呃，聪明是好的事情，我们大家都希望赚更多的钱，事业成功，学习更好。上帝既然给了我们这样一个大脑，我们应该。And of course, intelligence is very good. It helps us make more money. It helps you do better in school, have a better life, and we definitely should utilize it to our full advantage. But if 
，一个熟练的车手开车开得非常的快，但是却不知道目的地。那么大家可以想一下，这会是一种什么样的情况 ？And the problem is, if you have intelligence but no wisdom, you could kind of say that as a very skilled driver, he's, he's very good at driving, maneuvering, but does not have a destination, don't know where he's going, and you can imagine what's going to happen with that. 世上的人实际上现在就是这样一种情况，因为他们没有圣经的真理，他们不知道。我们人还需要一个灵魂，他只认识到我们人只有肉体的生命，他没有认识到我们人还需要灵魂的生命，也需要得救。所以呢，把肉体的生命看得高于一切，这样呢导致了很多的社会的问题。And that's this is a very common problem in the world. And everyone here nowadays only know how to satisfy the pleasure of the physical body, but they don't realize that we also have a spirit and a soul that we also need to pay attention to. 所以，当人把自己的肉体的生命看得高于一切的时候，那么会怎么样呢？如果他饿了，他需要东西，他没有，那会他会去干什么呢？他就会去偷，就会会去想，会去抢。And for people in the in the world, when they prioritize the physical body over the spirit and their soul, the problem is that if let's say for example they are hungry, they might go rob or steal for it. 啊，也正是因为他们没有了灵魂的追求。所以呢，仅仅追求肉体上的一些情欲，所以有时候得不到满足的时候，就会去追求，就会去吸毒，满足自己肉体上感官上的需要。And sometimes these people, if they're, they're missing certain aspects of their life, when they try to fulfill it, they fulfill the wrong way. For example, some people might take drugs or get addicted to certain, uh, uh, what's called drugs. Sorry. 同时，正是因为没有灵魂上的追求，所以这些人。唯一的目的就是为了肉体，就是为了钱，所以为了赚钱也不择手段。Yeah, with the absence of the, the desire of the soul and spirit, and、uh, trying to kind of achieve the things of the soul and spirit, what happens is that everything you do all of a sudden becomes just trying to satisfy the physical life. 大家有手机的都知道，每一天也许都会接到很多手机上的信息，告诉你你赚钱了，你什么什么样，你把你的什么手机手机手机的给我，你就可以得到多少钱，各种各样不不同的欺骗的手段。And, and and everyone who has a smartphone, you kind of probably could attest to this that every, you know, you, often you might might see some scams in the world, something like that. You tell me like if you give me Nigeria, if you pay a prince some money, I'll, I'll give you some money back, and so on and so forth. All these scams in the world. These, 伎俩都是这些聪明人想出来的 And all these schemes are thought about by these so-called intelligent people. 同时，大家也知道，医疗保险本来是一件很好的事情，但是。有了这些聪明的人以后，他们知道没有病，他们也可以去骗很多的钱，通过医疗保险。And when people, when using telling people when nothing, nothing better to do, you know, for example, even though like the med, the government provided health insurance is a very good thing, but these people, even though they have diseases, take advantage of the government to get free money. 而且从这些世界上的人，尤其是从这些聪明人看起来，我们每个基督徒实际上是非常笨的。And from the perspective of these intelligent and the worldly people, us Christians are actually very stupid. 而实际上在圣经中也记载了，呃，也也也知道他们的想法。圣经中是这样说的：然而属血气的人，就是说在世界上的人，属血气的人不会领会圣灵的事，反倒以为愚蠢。And and the Bible actually already preached. I saw this before, and every every states here. Here it says, but the natural man receiveth not of the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, for they are spiritually discerned. So they will think that the people of the church are so unbelievable, so foolish. I'll give some examples. And there are sometimes people wonder, how can the people of the church, the people of the church of Christ, be so stupid? We have such a big church, and outside there is a parking lot, a car lot. Can we get out and make money? Can we make money? 我们这个教会平时除了周星期天在用，周一到周五我们都可以出租，都可以来赚钱。It's just to give an example of how a person, in a worldly person, might see this. Is that we have this big church here, a very good location. For example, well, how come we're not renting the parking space during the weekday? How come, since we only use the church building on the weekend, why not rent this out to make money? 为什么摆在面前的钱，他们会觉得你们不去用，这是不是？觉得非常愚蠢的事情呢。And all these money-making opportunities, why don't you take advantage of it? Isn't that kind of stupid? 
。哎，那还有就是教会这些人为什么会这么傻？星期六工作了一周以后，非常的劳累，却要把星期六、星期天的时间用来做给别人花在别人身上，教别人学英语，教给给给大家义务量血压，为什么要？为什么要做这些这些傻事情而不自己去享受自己的生活呢 ？And furthermore, the, to these people, where they might think of like, why do these you know Christians work so hard during the week weekday and then weekend instead of just you know、uh, going after worldly pleasures and sacrifice our time to teach people English to come to church? I mean, like Peter, for example,、uh, giving free uh, blood uh, free blood pressure monitoring. 甚至连就是。甚至连所谓的教会，他们也充满了很多世俗的、聪明人的想法。比如说，教会既然人这么不多，为什么不把它办得愉快一点？为什么不不摆两家钢琴在这里，让大家听听音乐？为什么不说点大家高兴的事情，让更多的人来加入这个教会呢 ？And to a, to a worldly person, in, in just just the day-to-day -day church activities, the Sunday morning worship, they might think like, you know, why don't we do something more fun? You know, for example, put a piano. Or tell jokes and everything. Try to, you know, try to get more people to come. So these things in their eyes, they cannot understand. And these things, in from their perspective, they cannot understand. But we can. We are we Christians really that stupid? We can. 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 和一个不太聪明的人，他们之间的结果是怎么样子 ？And let's take a look at an example in the Bible. One person who's very smart, and one person who's not so smart. 呃，大家都知道大卫王，这是一个非常以色列皇帝上非常聪明、非常有智慧的一个皇帝。And let's use example of、uh, King David in the Bible, who's very intelligent, very wise. 但是呢，他干了一件非常非常坏的事情。But unfortunately, David also did something very, very bad. 他引诱了这个，他看到一个女子非常的美丽漂亮，就是他的下属乌利亚的妻子巴斯巴斯巴。And、uh, David at one point saw this very beautiful woman bathing. Is is it actually his servant Uriah's wife? 然后他就引诱她，然后和和她同房。And、uh, David slept with you know Bathsheba, Uriah's wife. 然后呢，巴斯巴就怀孕了。And、uh, Bathsheba actually was became pregnant. 但是你知道，大卫，大卫他是一个非常聪明的皇帝，他就会找很多很多聪明的借口，想把这个事情掩盖过去。And of course, you know, David, being a very intelligent person, he thought of ways and how to cover everything up. 所以他把乌利亚召回来，呃，希望他回家去看看他的妻子，希望他跟他妻子同房，然后可以掩盖这件事情。So what he, what David did was he asked Uriah to come home and tell him to、uh, sleep with his wife and hopefully, you know, cover the whole thing up. 但是乌利亚没有这样做。But Uriah didn't did, didn't do this. 然后呢，大卫又想出了更聪明的办法，他把乌利亚送到了前线去打仗，然后让所有支持他的士兵全部撤到后面。And、uh, David thought of even better idea, which is to send Uriah to the front line of war and have all his royal subjects fall back. 最后乌利亚被杀掉。And of course Uriah died while fighting. 也许。大卫在做这这一切的时候，他会认为自己一个非常自己是一个非常聪明的人，他可以想一个非常聪明的办法做了这件事情。And David, when he was doing this, he might be thinking to himself, "Wow, what a smart person I am to think of such a scheme." 但是，圣经中提到大上帝对这件事情非常的愤怒。And of course, if you read the Bible, God was not very pleased with David's actions. 因为他因为他忘了这个真的智慧是上帝，任何事情上帝都会看见。Because he forgot that God sees all. 最后，他也受到了惩罚。他的儿子之间互相的残杀。And of course, David was punished severely for this. All his sons fight each other for the right to the throne. 那么另外一个例子，我们再来看一下。And let's take a look at another example. 另外一个例子呢是关于这个雅各的儿子约瑟。Another example we see is a Joseph, a Jacob's son Joseph. 我们知道雅各非常喜欢这个儿子，引起了他兄弟的这个嫉妒。We know that Jacob loves Joseph more than all the other sons, and because of that, all the other sons, his brothers, were very jealous of him. So what his、uh, brothers did was that they 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 uh formed a plan to sell Joseph to the、uh, to slavery in Egypt. Joseph, 到了
，埃及以后在呃法老下面一个官员波提法家里面做事情。And Joseph, at uh, uh, one point, became a, a servant under uh, a person under Pharaoh and then Potiphar as well. Potiphar. And Joseph actually was a very, very good looking young man. And uh, Potiphar's wife, when, he, when she sees that, uh, started liking him. And if a person of a worldly intelligence, what might that person do? As, as you, that person might see such a beautiful woman being there to satisfy the worldly, uh, worldly desires. And this worldly person might be thinking that you could utilize that uh, because that person likes you, you might use that to your advantage and maybe get rid get out of slavery. But Joseph, what he did was, you know, you could say the very stupid decision, but he rejected. And what Potiphar's wife, when she did it, because she did not get what she wanted, she, instead of giving up, she actually accused Joseph of doing what she did not do and actually sent him to jail. Even though from the first look, from a worldly perspective, it might be a stupid decision, but ultimately everyone knows that Joseph actually was very blessed. Joseph was actually very smart because he actually understood why God sent him to Egypt. And Joseph, being a very smart person, he, he obeyed God's commandments. And ultimately, in the end, he became second in command after Pharaoh. So a lot of things, even though when you first look at it, it seemed very smart, but ultimately the results might differ. And the difference is that wisdom from God comes from above. And it, it had a lot of things that we as humans cannot think of, cannot see. For example, when, when everyone's driving on, on a road, without GPS, you really don't know where you're going or what's happening in front of you. For example, you might think like, oh, you know, this looks like a better shortcut of get to my destination faster, but without GPS, you might actually be stuck somewhere instead. And if you look at the real, real world examples, people who are supposedly good drivers, they maneuver in and out of traffic through the lanes, and sometimes these people actually have a much better chance of getting into an accident. And the problem with a lot of the you know, worldly intelligence or worldly smarts, you know, when you do some, something not so good, you might not feel very, you might not sleep well at night, you might have something bothering you. And for like people, for example, for people who lie very often, you might think that like you know, when people tell you something, is that a lie as well? And for the people who steal, you might wonder or you might be concerned about people stealing from you as well. And people who, who uh, mug others, who kill others, they might feel that something might happen to them as well. So I'm always concerned and worried about that. 
他们没，他们享受不到我们基督徒心里面有的这种喜乐和平安。And these people might never experience the peace and joy as Christians experience. 而且这些人费尽很多的心力，为自己积攒了很多的物质上的财富，但是他们是不是真的就能够享受呢？ And a lot of people in the world, they spend so much time, energy to accumulate worldly treasures and riches, but can they really enjoy in the end? 就像上就像圣经中举的那个例子，一个财主，为了使自己后半子没有什么忧虑，不停的建更大更大的粮仓，赚更赚更多的钱。等到有一天，他觉得好了，我的钱够了，我需要享受了。但是这个上这个时候，上帝去要他的生命。And we we could take an example of a parable of rich fool. Which there's this person who accumulate more and more and more crops and keep building bigger and bigger barns for their crops until one day he feel like you know what I stored enough for the rest of my life I never need to work anymore. But guess what? God decided that his life will be over. So, 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 so,
That so-called intelligent decision actually brought a result that he didn't actually like in the end. And this not only affected himself, but everyone around him, all his co-workers as well. So from this perspective, can you really say that the wisdom of the world is that really that smart? And from this perspective, can we really say our Christians are really, are they really that foolish? I'd like to read for everyone a verse in the Proverbs. It's Proverbs chapter 30, 15, verse 33. And it reads, The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. When we fear and respect the Lord, it, it helps us to prevent a lot of pain in our own lives. And we could kind of use the example of a young man who uh, respects his father very much and uh, always listens to his father's instructions. And as this child gets older and older, he might be thinking that he's, uh, he's very smart, that he, uh, he might have more intelligence than his father and start doing things that his father cannot do. And, you know, we could uh, we say that this is a stage in, in, in a child's life, in an adolescent rebellion, where, you know, they start getting smarter and they start rebelling and not listening to what parents tell them. <laughs> and not surprisingly, this is also a time where most young people get into the most trouble. And this is very similar to our relationship with God. You know, when we ourselves, when we respect and we fear God, we could actually save a lot of suffering in our own lives. And we, when we ourselves think that we're smart, when we, we, we know better than God, this is when trouble comes. Uh, we also know that there's a thing in Chinese, which I don't know how to translate. You're a similar type of people, you People with similar characteristics will normally get it together. Okay, so in other words, we have the same English is the birds of a better flock together. And you can kind of say that people who uh, fear God, right, they tend to band together. For that, these people have very similar characteristic. They might be, they might be humble, they might be loving and caring, and so on and so forth. And when when you when you people together, when they come together, you will see like everyone who joins them have a very similar characteristic and personality as well. And this is the very reason why when we all come to church, we, we feel a peace and joy that we do not get everywhere, uh, everywhere else. And uh, sometimes when I observe uh, visitors from outside, when they come to church, what they do is that they put their wallet or purse in front of them and they put their two hands over them. They probably don't understand that people in church are not like that, and they 
all, all, they always had that worldly mentality of having to protect their belongings. And typically what I what I observe is that people who these people who are we are like that after they stay in church, the longer they stay in church, they realize that people in church aren't like that and that start to feel more comfortable and start to trust other people more. And of course, having this wonderful uh, big family is a really, a truly a blessing. And after a, a long week of whether you go to school or whether you go to work, uh, being able to come here and give us peace and joy in our hearts. And to to the people in the world who feel like this the go come to church worshiping God may be a waste of time, but we do not understand that this is a truly a blessing for us. And most importantly, if that we everyone must understand, if we do follow God's commandment, ultimately we will have uh, hope of eternal life. And of course, the gain to heaven one day and hope of eternal life is the ultimate destination, ultimate hope and focus for every single one of us. And understanding we have a soul, we have a spirit, and we must chase after that every day in our lives, something that each, every one of our Christians must, must understand. And having this wisdom of going after your soul and spirit's needs will help us through our daily life in the physical world as well. Especially when you see this very foolish decision made outside. And perhaps uh, to the people of the world, the most foolish people might be Christian, who people who believe in God. And if if you look at the example of David, for example, when King David would commit that wrongdoing. His, his whole entire focus was trying to get rid of himself that, uh, and uh, not, not uh, be happy to realize what he actually did. But what did Jesus do? Jesus, as we know, did not have any sins. But rather, he, what he did was, on behalf of people who have sinned, he died on the cross. And to these people on, in the world, they might think, like, why is this person so foolish? And this whole idea, what, what, is, what is Christian, what is disciple? And the meaning of this is that we must be like Christ. And the, the action of Jesus is our example. And what he did, what he Jesus did as his action, what people think might as foolish, is exactly what we need to follow and now as an example. And let us you leave with a couple of Bible, uh, Bible verses to give everyone a little hope and a little uh, uh, encouragement. Uh, the first verse is the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. It reads, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, 
and all these things shall be added unto you. The second verse comes from Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them who love, that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. And I'm sure every one of us here who are Christians, we must experience that once we have more love for people around us, it affects people close to us, such as our family and friends. And because of your action and the way you think, you also affect, for example, your children, and it helps them grow better too. And if, if you express your love more and yet to being honest with and you might also get the respect of people around you, such as your co-workers. And as you do more and more of these things, this is probably what the Bible is referring to when when it says that for all good things come together for, to, to, for those who love God. And, and I hope here that every one of us can uh, encourage us and keep doing these so-called stupid things according to the world. And we know that ultimately the, the gift of God is in front of us. Thank you everyone.